mommies to be if you're around 16 weeks pregnant you probably have a lot of questions like what does my baby look like now can you tell the gender yet and what kind of testing does my doctor offer so in this video i'm going to be talking about how your baby is developing how you might be feeling and common symptoms you might be feeling and also what to expect at your next ob appointment including genetic testing so pretty much everything that you need to know about your pregnancy right now, we're going to talk about. But first, if you're new here, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. You're watching In The Pink and if you're new here, In The Pink means in good health and spirit. So if you like being healthy and happy, click subscribe because you're in the right place. At 16 weeks of pregnancy, you are four months pregnant and you have 24 more weeks to go. Your baby is about four inches long and weighs about four to five ounces. They're about the size of an avocado. Even though your baby's eyes are still sealed shut, they're starting to perceive light. They can also start to move side to side. Your baby's heartbeat at this point is about 150 to 180 beats per minute, and it pumps approximately 24 liters of blood a day. On ultrasound, your baby is starting to look more like a baby. The legs are longer than the arms, and it makes your baby look more proportionate. The taste buds are starting to function so that they can now taste amniotic fluid. Interestingly, amniotic fluid can take on the flavor of whatever you're eating, so they might be developing their taste preferences. Guess that kind of explains why all my kids like bacon. Like, a lot. The baby's head is starting to become more erect. It's not been over as it was in the first trimester. It's more in line with the rest of the spine, like this. So as for you, this is the time that most women will feel the very best. By now, morning sickness is starting to go away, and because you are feeling better, you are able to stomach foods better. You might even be starting to experience cravings. Now, I've talked about mine in earlier videos. I love breakfast cereals, and with my last pregnancy, it was grape nut cereal, which was weird because before that pregnancy, I hadn't eaten grape nuts like, since I was a teenager, but with that last pregnancy, I had to eat at least a bowl every day, sometimes five. I'm curious what your cravings are. Put that in the comments section below. So the other great thing about the second trimester is you aren't exhausted and probably have a lot more energy, but your belly isn't too big to get in your way. This is the time to start making preparations for your baby to come home. You need to make sure that you have a bassinet or a crib, and you also need to get a car seat before you bring the baby home. It's also helpful to have a diaper pail. Now, I recommend one that keeps the smells down. The first one I purchased for my first baby was plastic. It worked well at first. But over time, the stink smell started permeating through the plastic and it smelled all the time. Now I use one called Ubi and I really love it because it's stainless steel so the odors can't penetrate through it. So when the lid is shut, you can't smell anything no matter how full it is. Now when the lid is open, that's a different story. So at your next OB appointment, your OB will probably discuss second trimester screening. This is blood work that checks to see if your baby has a higher chance of having a genetic disorder like Down syndrome or neural tube defect or trisomy 18. These tests don't tell you that your baby absolutely has one of these disorders, just that there is a higher chance that they do. If the test is abnormal, you will be offered a referral for something called amniocentesis. In this test, a long needle is put through the abdomen and into the uterus, where it will collect a sample of amniotic fluid. Now there is a risk of miscarriage with this test, about one miscarriage out of every 200 tests done. Now these genetic abnormalities aren't something that can be cured or treated while in the womb. So knowing about an abnormality doesn't mean that you can do anything about the abnormality. For this reason, many women choose not to do testing at all. It's entirely up to you. There's absolutely no right or wrong. Just whatever you're comfortable doing. It's also pretty common for OBs to do an ultrasound at 16 weeks. This is a really fun ultrasound because if the baby's legs are not crossed or the umbilical cord isn't in the way, you can definitely tell the gender of the baby. It's not the best time to see the gender. Usually the big 20 week ultrasound is the best. But if the baby gives you a good peek, you can definitely see the gender. So on ultrasound, when they're looking for the gender, your OB or the ultrasonographer will be looking at a cross section of the baby at the level of the hips. So on the 
screen, you can see the thighs, and then in between the thighs, you can see the gender. If it's a boy, you can see the scrotum and the penis, and if it's a girl, you won't see a scrotum or a penis. And if you can get a really good view, you can see three little lines, which are the labia. You might also see your OB doing some measuring. If they do this, they are measuring certain parts of your baby. So they're gonna measure the baby's head, they're gonna measure their abdomen and the length of the femur. And they use these measurements to determine the approximate size and weight of your baby. They track this to help them make sure that your baby is growing the way that they should be. In next week's video, I will be talking about sleeping positions and I'll be talking about when it's safe to have sex and circumstances when you shouldn't be having sex. So hit the bell notification so you won't miss that video. Right here is the link to my whole playlist on pregnancy videos. Go check out some of the earlier pregnancy videos. They are packed with a lot of good information. Click on that and I will see you over there. You also might notice tender bleeding gums. This is because of the increased pregnancy hormone progesterone. You will have an increased response to the plaque bacteria.